Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here I'll be doing a demonstration on how to restore the faded rear window shelf on a BMW. For this I am working with the rear window shelf from my 1997 BMW 540i. This can fade quite badly over time due to sun exposure and age. You can even use this method to change the color of fabric too. Originally this car had black fabric and due to the fading, it's now a light purple. Removal processes will vary. I do have a removal procedure specific to this vehicle, so be sure to check that out. As a basic overview, I had to remove the C-pillar trim, headrest, seat bottom, and then seat back. My car isn't equipped with fold-down rear seats either. Remove all the trim pieces on the shelf panel. I have already removed the speaker covers, child restraint covers, and seatbelt trim. To remove the rear vent panels, flip the shelf over to access the clips, push the clips, and then pull the vents out. Do the same for the headrest trim too. And as you can see under the plastic trim, there is the original black color. I would recommend vacuuming the piece first. Be careful when doing this as you can mark it very easily. The marks will disappear once dyed. If you have any stains, then I would recommend shampooing the panel. Otherwise, this may affect the dyeing process. For dye, I picked up some from a local craft store, which is intended for fabric. This specific stuff is made by RIT, available in a liquid and powder form. Shake up the dye so it mixes thoroughly. I used a small spray bottle, 114 milliliters or 4 ounces of dye, and then filled the rest of the bottle with vinegar to help the dye bite into the fabric. Total solution in the bottle was 455 milliliters or 16 ounces. I used about half the bottle of dye in the first round. I am working on a cooler day so the fabric won't dry as quickly. I used a brush to help move around the fibers just in case the vacuum cleaner may have pushed them down. It's best to preheat the vinegar as well which helps the dyeing process. I even have a bucket of hot water to keep the spray bottle in so it stays hot. Spraying the dye onto the fabric using the soft brush. For this I have a paintbrush. Work it into the fabric. A soft brush won't damage the fibers but it helps move them around so the dye soaks in evenly and reduces the chance of shadowing or blotches. Apply enough dye so it soaks into the fabric and is damp but not too much where it's dripping and will cause drying issues. Wear rubber gloves and clothing which won't matter if you get dye on it. Once done with the first coat, I took it inside and allowed it to dry overnight. Now for the second coat, while it's dry, use the brush to fluff up the fibers and move them around in case they're stuck together and will cause any dyeing issues. Again, using the exact same process, apply the dye and use the brush to move the fibers around when wet. When applying the dye or placing it somewhere to dry, lay down plastic or work in an area where the dye won't damage something. These deck boards are getting replaced, so it doesn't matter if they do get stained by the dye. Don't touch the fabric while it's drying. I did manage to do this, and it left marks in the fabric, which I had to blend back into the area using more dye and the brush. The third coat, using the brush to move around the fabric, just like before, while spraying the dye evenly over the fabric. The amount required will depend on how badly faded the fabric is. For the fourth coat, ended up being my last coat. I found when I first started this process, as the fabric dried, it became lighter. As I got into more coats, after it dried, the fabric appeared to be darker. Allowing it to dry overnight, just like before, in between each coat, I am left with something like this. The fabric still remains very soft, unlike some other spray dyes where you may find it rough after it has dried. When touching the fabric, the dye doesn't get on your fingers either. As some tips, do not oversaturate the area so it takes longer to dry and damage the glue bond between the panel and the fabric. Watch out for the morning dew or rain. This too can cause blotching and you'll have to blend it afterwards. I waited for a few days before reinstalling back into the car. After a few days, the vinegar smell will also eventually disappear. New videos are uploaded every week to my channel. Subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking on the button below the video. This concludes the rest of my video. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, and if you have any comments, please feel free to post them. Thank you for watching.